So I put out a couple videos about survivorship life. I've been getting a ton of questions about it. So in today's video, I'm gonna break down the difference between joint life and survivorship life. So there's two different kinds of life insurance where you can insure two lives. And I broke down a video where I talked all about survivorship life insurance. If you haven't seen that video, pause this one, take a minute, it's a short video, go watch it right here. It's all about survivorship life insurance and the different ways you can use it and apply it to your life. But there's another type of life insurance called joint life insurance. And so joint life insurance is something that's a little bit unique, but both allow you to insure two lives. When you can insure two lives, the insurance company can spread the risk lower the mortality costs, and typically you can get a little bit more death benefit or in some cases a lot more death benefit for the same premium. Now again, what's really important to remember about life insurance is there's all kinds of ways to structure it. You can structure life insurance to put more premiums in so that you can build a cash value and utilize that cash value along the way. There's another type of structure where you wanna go the opposite direction and you wanna put as little bit of money in to get as much protection as possible. That's what I'm talking about in today's video. Joint life says that you can insure two lives and another way to think of joint life is called first to die. So you can put two people on a policy and you'll pay the benefit upon the first person's passing. So where that's extremely useful is a couple of different cases. Let's say you have a father and a son and they go and take out a mortgage together and they're both living in the house and they're both sharing the cost of the mortgage. And if one of them were to pass away, they wanna be able to protect the other one and pay off the mortgage. That's a great use of, of joint life insurance. Now, another scenario might be in retirement where you have a husband and a wife, spouses, and they end up needing to be able to replace income if the first spouse passes away. Remember, if you're both claiming a social security benefit in retirement and one spouse predeceases the other, you get the higher of the two benefits as your widow's benefit or survivorship benefit. Joint life insurance can be really, really useful in that case because together you can put a little bit of money away and be able to provide yourself with a death benefit that'll kick in right when you need it to be able to replace that income. So joint life is something that we use in a, in a scenario where we need to get income to be able to be replaced or be able to take care of financial obligations where the surviving person would be hurt if that other person were to pass away. So joint life is a really useful scenario. Going back to survivorship life, the way to think of that is second to die. So again, if you haven't watched that video and you're just watching this one, what happens with survivorship life insurance is you're gonna pay a premium and because you're spreading the mortality cost over two lives, you're typically able to get substantially more death benefit. And that death benefit can be used to replace uh, assets or debts for uh, your surviving heirs or to be able to just leave a great inheritance. It has a lot of different use cases that we can use it for as well. Now in both sets of policies, you can actually structure them the opposite way. And you can actually lower the death benefits, increase the premiums and develop a cash value inside of those policies. And in some cases that can be a very efficient structure because again, you're lowering mortality costs and the lower the costs are in the policy, theoretically, the better the cash value can do inside that policy. It's really important to break these down and talk about it, but what's even more important is to think of life insurance in a framework, right? A lot of people are trying to use these policies to do everything. And there are plenty of agents out there online, especially on YouTube, that'll tell you, oh, you know what? This life insurance policy will fix everything. You can put money into it. You can take income from it. It has a living benefit rider that'll be there for long-term care. It has a death benefit. It'll protect your family. They'll just name all these things that you can use it for. And theoretically, can you? Yes. But is that the maybe most optimal way to structure it? I don't know. It depends on your circumstances. But what you really need to be careful of is you don't wanna to try to get one policy to do everything for you in retirement. There's different policies for different reasons and they all have different strengths. So I'm a big believer in playing to your strengths and putting your best player in the right position. And so again, that becomes a, a job of really getting clear on what it is you need to have happen. And around that clarity, that's where we can form these different solutions to remove risk and make sure that you're gonna have everything that happens that you need it to in retirement. So I hope this video is helpful to clear that up Really what I want you to take away from it is the different frameworks 
of how to think about life insurance and where to use it. Really, at the end of the day, life insurance is a risk removal tool where you can transfer risk to a company if there's a big burden, if something were to happen, and that's the best place you can really use it for you to be able to maximize it in your lifestyle or in retirement. But again, there's all kinds of things you can do with it. It just depends on your goal. So I hope this video is helpful. If you if you haven't got a chance, go check out my survivorship video. And then there's another video where I talk about taking survivorship to the next level, combining it with an annuity and some of the cool things you can do with that in retirement.